Hi, David Fine here from Keys Mods. Today we're gonna to do a very different episode than you're used to seeing here in Keys Mods. Today, we are going to show you how we are breeding some moths in captivity. So what happened is I actually have a cluster of Faithful Beauty moths. That's right, Composia fidelissima. These are our, uh, our channel mascot. They just emerged from their chrysalis. Uh, we've got some males and females and we are gonna show you how to get them to do what moths do best and then give us some eggs so that we can continue on uh, raising them. So guys, check this video out, stay tuned. So guys, first step in when you're raising moths is you got to know kind of what the situation is, what the habitat is for that species. The Faithful Beauty moth is a day flying moth. So what we're going to do is we are going to have that prop them up over here by a window so that they get some natural sunlight. Uh, we have a screened in enclosure. As you can see, we've already got a couple uh, of them in here and we are looking to get some eggs. But what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to set it up. So now, if you catch a wild caught female, a lot of times all you have to do is put her in a bag or a container that has some host plant. And a lot of times that host plant smell, chemical stimulate, will help her and stimulate her to start laying eggs. And she'll lay eggs on the sides of the container, on the bag or whatever she's in. But since these guys are virgins and have are just emerged from their chrysalis, we need the boys and the girls to do what boys and girls do best. So what we're gonna do is we are going to set them up in a terrarium, a small terrarium. Uh, if you have a bigger screened in enclosure, it can work in a bigger screened in enclosure. Uh, but first thing we're gonna do is we gotta make sure that they have uh, some food. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've gotten some white alkaline flowers. These are Bidens. So if you want to come up here and get some close up of these flowers, this is a local nectar source that is a wild uh, nectar, nectar source here that the Composias will eat. They love Bidens, both males and females will eat Bidens, uh, drink the nectars from the Bidens. I also have, if you can see right here, so I also have, this is a sweet almond bush, which is not a native. However, uh, the they absolutely love the nectar from this. And this is an, these are both alkaline based nectar sources, which means uh, it helps males uh, with sperm production. So we went ahead and got some flowers and we are going to go ahead and put those flowers in there. But also on the bottom of the cage, what I like to do is I like to get a little cup like this. And this this is like probably seven or eight paper towels that is uh, are saturated with a sugar water solution. So uh, we need to make sure that they have enough carbohydrates, enough energy to do what they need to do. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna go ahead and open up my little uh, terrarium here and I'm gonna start by putting my sugar water container down here in the bottom. And what we can actually do, so if you see if you can film here, what we can actually do is we can actually take the moth and actually put her down on the sugar water solution. And a lot of times they'll go, she'll go ahead and start feeding. No, well, she's not interested in eating right now, but that was a bad example. But let me see. Uh, when we put them in there, a lot of times we can prompt them to feed uh, by hand because uh, they don't, they're not gonna go to a sugar water solution in nature, but they'll go to it once their feet touch the uh, sugar water, they sense that it's food, they sense that it's a, something sweet, and then they'll start drinking it. So uh, then what we'll do is, I got our sugar water solution in there. Now I'm gonna put these flowers that are nectar sources uh, in water, in little water picks, and we are actually going to put put these in here like this, is we'll actually put the flowers, they're in water, but we actually have them up on the top of the container because a lot of times the moths and butterflies will like to hang out near the top, especially if there's light. And what we also wanna do, if, if the light source is over here, the sunlight or the window, we'll actually turn the container so that the the flowers are towards the light because they'll moths will head, tend to go towards the light 
uh, the day flying moths and butterflies. So now you can see, actually, is she starting to feed? She's starting to feed right here, guys. So just like that, as soon as we put that flower in, she found it and she started to feed. So like you see, we've got a couple uh, different males and females in here. And believe it or not, they will come in and they will uh, find each other and mate. So now, the next thing we do is we are going to put a male and a female in. So these are freshly emerged from their chrysalis. And guys, all we'll need them for is about a day. And then we can release them after they give us some eggs. They're gonna do their thing. Uh, once they copulate, the male gives her the spermatophore, she starts laying eggs, and within a day or so, she'll be able to uh, give us some eggs and we can let them go. So what we're gonna do is, the, the difference between males and females, guys, on moths, uh, in these guys, the, the antenna, and I'll show you some pictures on top of this video, the females have a straight antenna with no hairs on them. The males are a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit less robust in the, in the wings. The, actually, the males are a little bit brighter in their metallic blue, but they have that feathery antenna. And that's the, the organ that they use to sense the female's pheromones. So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and release this female in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if she'll drink from the water source down on the bottom. Let's see what happens if I put her on that. Well, oh, let's see. She decided that she wasn't interested in eating. So she's crawling up the side there. That's fine. All right, so now I'm, I've got the female in there. Now I've got the male, and I'm gonna see if I can get him to feed. He's, he's ready to uh, go, man. He's, he's ready to go here. Let's see if I can get him without harming him. No, he's ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put him in. Oh, he already flew out. So guys, here, here's a great example. The male that we just put in immediately started feeding on the flowers. So that's a great sign. Male started feeding on the flowers. Up here, the female was feeding there, but that's a great sign because these flowers are loaded with alkalins, which will help in sperm production. So that guy is gonna be ready to go. I mean, this is the male that we just put in, right? He just flew. But as you can see, they get around pretty good in this little terrarium here. Um, this is just like a little two by one, two foot by one foot by one foot size terrarium and that's that okay so now the last thing we want to do guys is we want to put uh, a little piece of the host plant inside now we don't have their native host plant is devil's potato which i don't have here in my yard but one of the things that they like they like oleander so they will actually lay eggs on oleander so if i put a couple stems of this oleander inside of here when the females are mated with and they will find these oleander leaves, they will lay eggs and be happy. So guys, what we're gonna do is now we're gonna zip this up and come on over here, Sophie. I'm actually gonna put this right here by this window. And so now we've got a terrarium here, guys, with some of our Faithful Beauty moths and they've got their food We've got plenty of carbohydrates. We've got their host plant source. We've got males and females in there. So let's see how long it takes before they copulate and then lay eggs. So let's see how long it takes. All right, guys. So we had to move our cage outside. Uh, they weren't really doing too well inside. So we wanted to move it outside. Shh. You know what this is? That is bugs doing what bugs do best exciting stuff we have a pair of faithful beauties and they are doing their thing giving us some fertility going on uh, this couple has paired up in the late afternoon uh, by the way guys faithful beauties are definitely more active in the evening time uh, probably in the last couple hours before the sun goes down is when they're most active so uh, all day long they, they kind of walked around a little bit. They pretty much stayed in the shadows. They kind of came over here and got nectar or whatever, but it wasn't until the late afternoon when this happened. So guys, I'm excited because this means we're gonna get fertile eggs very soon. Probably looking out for eggs tomorrow. Check it out, guys.
All right, guys, so good news. Uh, now that our faithful beauties have been in here for a while, they have successfully uh, laid some eggs. Uh, we're going to show that to you. We're going to raise the faithful beauties for you and show you the entire life cycle in a future uh, episode. Uh, but now, uh, since these guys have given us all that we need, it, we can go ahead and take, uh, take them and uh, let them go and allow them to go free. So let's see. Anybody else here? Yep. Oops. Yeah, so there they go. Oh, there he goes. All right. All right, guys, so that's all we got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about raising moths and getting them to uh, give you eggs in captivity. Um, don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell for notifications. Uh, give us a thumbs up, like the video, share it with your friends, and check out our website. It's uh, keysmoths.com. We've got all kinds of stuff there on the butterflies and moths of South Florida. So, uh, guys, stay tuned, take care, enjoy South Florida. Bye now.